Welcome, everyone, back to the School of Greatness podcast. We've got my man, Fabio Viviani, in the house, the ultimate chef. Good to see you, brother. It's good to be I'm here, so man. I'm so glad. I feel like you're one of my <laughs> brothers, man. I feel like right when I connected with you in person, I was like, yes, I get this guy. You know, you're good people, and good people got to stick together. Exactly, always. exactly. So I want to start with a couple of fun facts about us. Yes. Some mutual points of interest. Yes, please. So Fabio's from Italy. Yes, born I, and raised. I'm quarter Italian. It qu- <laughs> Do you know what? My if, grandmother's from Italy. Uh, from you know what area? Um, yeah, it's called. I'm gonna pronounce it wrong. I think it's called Sulmona. 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 Do you know? Is that? Are you kidding me? I love it. Sulmona is a beautiful area yeah. in the northern region of Italy, uh-huh. like center, like center up, and uh, they're really, really famous actually for their steak. Really? Yes. There is like I think every year there is a major. Um, there is a major um, steak uh, like fair. Huh. And, you know, Sulmona. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful city. It's close to the lake. Wow. Um, it's fun, fantastic, beautiful. I have to go. Ch- I've never been. So I've been to Italy. You've been, been to Italy. I've been to Milan. I've been to Florence. So, uh, not Florence, but Venice. And, been to, uh, I'm from Milan. Florence. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna have to come check out Florence next time yeah. in Rome. Next time I go. Now, next time you go, you gotta give me I'm a heads gonna, up, and we'll go do it we'll, right. We gotta, we do gotta <laughs> do it right, man. Come on, we gotta do it right. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, so that's uh, the first uh, mutual connection. The second mutual connection is uh, we're both on a Bravo show. Yeah, you were you were on Top Chef, obviously. Yeah. It's a fan favorite, and you know, blew up as a huge star. And uh, I was on a show called <laughs> called Misadvised. It was like a relationship dating show. Misadvice. Yes, it was a it was a bad decision, but it was an interesting experience. I'll you know, say that. You know, here here's the bad, here I think that is the good and the bad about mm. television, right? Yeah. If you're a good guy and you look good, you're yourself, mm. regardless if the show is successful or not, yeah. you still have some good material to use yes. here and there. Yes. If you look like you're a douchebag <laughs> on national television, <laughs> right? That's really it's bad. gonna come across. It's bad. gonna come across really bad. It's hard to build a business around being a douchebag. Yeah, it is. Unless it's a it's business. Unless being that's a, part of your business. Unless it's part of your business. <laughs> you know, there is a lot of mean people on TV that they're doing exactly. very well. Exactly, yeah. So you know, it was interesting. And, um, you know, I'd love to hear your experience. Now, you were on Top Chef for two seasons. Is that right? One season yes, and we, you we, came on another. Yes, I was on the season five. I was the runner-up and the fan favorite. <clears throat> and I was on season eight All-Star, and I made it through, the, through like two-thirds of the competition. Then yeah. I got kicked out because I couldn't made a good version of an American staple. Uh, you know, they asked me to mm. make a burger, and yeah. I made a burger, but I, I'm an Italian guy right. making so an American Italian, staple. Yeah, so yeah. I made my version of a burger yeah. against like 10 American. My burger wasn't as good as their burger. Right, gotcha. Understandable. Oh, well. I'm a good sport. It is what it is. It's okay. But you've done extremely well after the show, and uh, you know I've been researching a lot about you and your your videos. It's funny, we were just talking before this about how my uh, project manager like fell in love with you when she was <laughs> watching the show, and then she saw that you emailed us, and you, you signed up for some of our programs, and she was freaking out and like texting me nonstop, like, you have to have this guy on the podcast. I was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> you know, I, I got to say something. That, you know, I, I haven't even, I wasn't even on social media. Mm. I, I didn't even have a Facebook account before I came to the United States uh-huh. nine years ago. If you go back to my Facebook account, my LinkedIn is a few years old. My yeah. Facebook is only seven years old. Yeah. Uh, my Twitter, even less. My Instagram is a couple of years old. Uh-huh. You know, so I was a fan of yours. <laughs> I appreciate it. Way before <laughs> your project manager was aware of who I was. Right, right. So, you know, you're the guy that kind of got me into the social media oh, aspect cool. with LinkedIn first. Sure. And then, you know, with everything else. So I'm, 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 I appreciate it. Yeah. This is good. This is good. You know, yeah. this is one of the things I kick out of my, kick off my list uh, <laughs> of my wish list, uh, you know, my I like list. it. I like it. And uh, we were talking before how LinkedIn's actually been a really powerful platform to build your business. You get a lot of leads from there, a lot of customers. Unbelievable. But you got to do it right. Yeah. And, and and your guide, your LinkedIn guide and courses that you have, have really broken down for me mm. the path mm. on what needs to be done to get noticed. Yeah. Because, you know, LinkedIn is just nothing else like another social media platform with the advantage that... 99% of anything that's going on there is business related. Yes. So if you if you if you use it right, if you plug yourself right, if you place yourself on as an influencer, mm-hmm. you can monetize that. Yes. yes. And people are always be like, what's the ROI of social media? Well, it's hard to quantify because yeah. there is really no metrics yet. But if you do it right, 
you can actually see result yeah, yeah. because hey, if I get ten emails a week of people connecting with me and they want to do business with me <laughs> through LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and two of those ten leads translate into a paycheck, that's pretty guess good. what? It's a free social media networking site, and now yeah. all of a sudden we're making money yeah, off of it. Exactly, it's just a way of building those relationships, yeah. at, you know, positioning yourself as an influencer, yes. making yes. sure you're doing the right thing. So it's really cool to hear you've done that. And I want to talk a little bit about. A little bit about the chef side of you, but to be honest, I want to more talk about the business side because that's what I like to talk about, and it sounds like it's more fun for you right now anyways. It's, you know, a chef <coughs> is what makes me happy. It's yes. a passion, right? Yes. I, I, this is I what mean, I was... I mean, look how happy this guy is. Look at this guy. <laughs> just looks happy on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sh chef is what people know me for. You know, I, we have a lot of restaurants. I'm in the kitchen all the time. Honestly, yeah. I it's more the time I wear a chef coat than the time I wear a suit and tie yeah. to do a, a keynote or to mm -hmm. do some training or, you know, sometimes I do keynote and they, and I wear like a shirt, jeans <laughs> and sneakers. I'm a big sneakers fan. I like I those. Know. I saw those. I was like, those I, are I'm, nice. a big, I'm a big sneaker guy. But the reality is that <laughs> I enjoy the business aspect because with food, you feed people and you teach people how to cook. Mm -hmm. But for somebody like my average audience, you know, from somebody from 20 to 50 years old, men or women, doesn't matter. If they learn how to cook a recipe, yeah, you enhance their life because now you teach them how to make a dish or something, and that's great. But my 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 goal is to have successful restaurant, right? Yeah. So chef is not really a mentor, is not really a teacher. You know, I can show you how to make a recipe, and you're gonna look good next time you have friends over. Yeah. But that's it. It's not gonna rule your life in a different way. Right. Being an entrepreneur and being a business give you the ability if you can connect with people to really mentor them yeah. and change their life for the better yeah. think about how many people have followed your advice for your online which by the way i bought all of them and it's phenomenal material thank you the webinar course the latest one that you launch about how to build your online business yeah. i have online businesses and i still talk great advice from your courses you. and enhance my ability to cash in my expertise by monetizing yeah. and package that yeah but think about how much you enhance people's life by showing mm -hmm. them tools mm -hmm. that if they're willing to apply those techniques yes. and those work, they can make more money, they have more time free, they can yeah. provide better for their family. That's what excites me more than create a simple dish. Right, right. You I know? love it. I love it. And so what was, growing up in Italy, what was the dream for you? Was it ever was it always to come to America or was it no. let's do let's build a restaurant because you had multiple restaurants in Italy and were you just like, I'm gonna stay in Italy for the rest of my life? Or what happened to make you wanna come here and, and do all this? I never thought in my wildest dream I would have been American that would have been successful. Really? Because when I was in Italy, I grew up in a family with no money. Mm -hmm. Um I, I did wear a cast on my on my chest for about two years because I had scoliosis when I was wow. six years old because I didn't have a bed to sleep on it. So my family, oh, we wow. were living in a 300 square foot apartment, six people, wow. and there was no room for it's bed. Like this size. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I used to sleep on a recliner oh up till I was six and a half years old. Um, and that gave me scoliosis, so I was in a cast. Now, we were wow. poor, poor to the point where there is no more rooms for bed in the kitchen. My my grandmother was getting out of bed, and she was at the kitchen table because there was, you know, it was a small apartment. Wow. We had no money to pay for nothing else. Grew up with food stamp. You know, my, my dad yeah. is working three jobs, my mother is working three jobs, and still there is no money. There is too much month left at the end of the month, <laughs> right, right? Right. So <laughs> when I was 11 years old, my mother got sick. And I'm going to make a long story short. She, we, Italy is very different. Healthcare, there yes. is no Medicare. It's public health, but yeah. it's like, it's like really, it's like a. It's not that good. It's not that good. <laughs> you got to wait a month well, to it get could, it. In. It could be good, but there is too many people <clears throat> trying to get supplied by. So yeah. it's, it's, it's sketchy, right? Yeah. So my mom is getting sick. I'm the only person not working. Mm. I'm 11 years old, so I took a job in a bakery shop. I was baking pie, and I was, and because I was too young to be legally employed. The owner of the bakery shop said, "Do you want to work nighttime? Mm. Nobody's checking at night. See, yeah. It's Italy, right? Yeah. So I started to work from midnight till seven thirty in the morning when I was eleven years old. Wow. And I did that for three years. I was making enough money. I paid my mom Medicare. Wow. I put her through surgery, and then when I was fifteen, after working three year every night from midnight to seven thirty, then getting my backpack and go to school every day." Um, I got a job in a restaurant business, daytime, because the owner of the bakery shop also, he owned few restaurants uh -huh. in Florence, Italy. 
So he offered me a daytime job, and I took it so I could start to sleep a little bit at night. <laughs> and then uh, when I was 18, he made me part owner of the restaurant. He said, wow. dude, you've been working with me for seven years. You never ask for a day off. I, I was the only, I'm still the only person I know that by the age of 17 got brought three times at the hospital for exhaustion. Exhaustion is when you work yourself so hard yeah. that your body just shut down and, and just force you to go to sleep. To sleep. Yeah. Yeah. And I, in three different occasions, I woke up in a hospital two days after I passed shut out. Shut up. Yeah. Unbelievable. Two days after, so they had to rehydrate you. They there. rehydrate me and just I wore <clears throat> myself to, to to exhaustion. And the owner said, you know, you're a hardworking kid, you're smart, you're you you know, suck at school, but I, I was bad <laughs> at school, man. Me too. I was horrible. I was, I was really good bad. at two things when I was young boxing and working. There you go. That's all I was good. Boxing, I broke my wrist, kind of similar story. It's done then. Done there, um, and then I couldn't box anymore. Then I did a little karate, but it wasn't as much because I was punching people instead of grabbing them. So <laughs> it was been very good, man. <laughs> karate didn't work for me, and then and but I was work, I was still working really hard. So yeah. I opened with this guy my first restaurant when I was 19, and I never looked back since. Wow. So I've been self-employed since I was 19 years old. Wow. So why do you think you worked so hard in those years, even after the first time you went to the hospital? Why did you keep putting yourself through exhaustion? I, you know, I'm a, I have a very addicted personality. Yeah. That is one thing. And uh, I'm an overachiever. That's an overachiever. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Let's, let's, let's take a step back here. <laughs> you didn't Two, know English. <laughs> 2005, December, when I moved to the United States, I didn't spoke a word of English. So some <laughs> words and some sentence, still, I have a hard time pronouncing. It's pronounce. okay. All right. So I understand you. I'm an overachiever. Uh, a, a very addicted personality and I see restaurant business and, and working really hard as escaping from what was happening to all my friends. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a rough neighbor. We didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. By when I was 20, half of my friends were drug addicts. The other half were in jail. Yeah. So <clears throat> I love him to death, but I don't want to end that way. Yeah, you know. And, and I grew up with a family where we had no money, but honest people, hardworking people. Yeah, yeah. So I saw work as an as a it was an escape to focus your energy and to focus my energy on yeah. something constructive rather than spend my time just right. you know just messing it up. Right, right, got you. Um, yeah. Now, <clears throat> have you learned to balance over the years the importance of getting sleep, the importance of taking some time to relax your mind and your body so that you can be more productive, or you still go 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 without? getting that balance i learn ways to do that <laughs> not traditional ways like you know we just opened my restaurant number 10 in chicago um two, three weeks ago mm -hmm. before that we opened another two months ago i personally have not taken a day off a traditional like average people oh today's my day monday i'm off <laughs> i haven't heard that in a long time wow um no vacations no well i took my wife Two weeks to vacation in Europe. For your honeymoon or something. Yeah, for my honeymoon. <laughs> I actually recently got married. I got married a few yeah. weeks ago. Oh, wow. Congrats. Thank you. Appreciate That's it. That's awesome. And, and we have a baby on the way, so wow, that will congrats. force me to be a little quiet. But yeah. So my vacation now is, all right, let me take my wife a week to Paris, a week to Italy, and a week to Spain or whatever. And in those three weeks, while she relaxes, she sunbathes, <laughs> she does stuff that normal people call relaxing. You're online working, I'm, networking. I'm, I'm typing my next book. I'm yeah. writing my blogs. I yes. make my time efficient while my body is relaxing on a beach chair or something. Yes, yes. Because otherwise, there is no way to sustain the kind of business that we have mm -hmm. if your mind is not on. And I'm not talking about a 90-minute basketball game or two hours at the gym. Yeah, yeah. That's you part. That. Of, that's part of working on your business because yes. if you're not healthy your and you don't take care of yourself yeah. your business is not going to thrive of course i'm talking about taking a week <laughs> off and shutting right, your right. cell phone hasn't happened in a long time <laughs> right right now let's talk about the the health aspect as a chef because there's obviously a lot of chefs who are overweight and yeah. that don't take care of them their health yeah. how have you been able to take care of your health and do you feel like you can be a great chef if you're extremely overweight and you you're know, not taking care of that what i i think that regardless of the chef scene, um, you got to take care of your body or your body eventually will let you know that you're not taking care of it. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of people don't don't think like, <clears throat> you know, let's walk for an hour a day. Let's go at the gym. I, I, don't, I never had a gym membership. Right. Well, so Italy's for me, different, you know, back in the... <laughs> 
Uh, I have I have a go. treadmill at my house. I have a high raised desk like you uh-huh. have right here. Where uh-huh. we you know I am very active. Yes. I, the gym is it, gym is an excuse to be active. You can be active without the gym, Walking right? Around, Walk around, yeah, yes. the brisk walk for a half an hour. It's all you need. Yeah. But um, I think the chef in particular, it's it's a it's a very excessive. It's an extreme. Uh, work environment mm-hmm. we work in in a, in very high heat because yeah. you know kitchen is hot my very kitchen hot. could get to 120 degrees oh. you stay there for eight ten hours think about it you gotta hydrate a lot of chef lot like excess because it's a <clears throat> nighttime job it's a public you're in a public venue there is a lot of booze sometimes there is drug involved yeah. you know it's it's not a healthy environment to begin with mm. but at the end of the day Spoons doesn't make you fat, <laughs> you know. Cigarettes don't smoke themselves, yeah. and uh, and it's it's really up to the people. I work in a toxic environment because restaurant business is not a healthy environment, but the reality is that I'm not a toxic person. Yeah, I don't over drink. Sure, I get a beer sometime or a glass of wine or a scotch, or whatever. You know, I'm a social drinker. Yeah, you know, I don't do drugs. I take care of myself. You know, it's like. Dude, spoon doesn't make you fat. You gotta, you gotta eat it, right? <laughs> yeah. So at the end of the day, it really comes down to the willingness of yourself to take mm-hmm. care of your own body. I don't. I'm a believer that circumstances doesn't define who you're gonna be. It's how you react to circumstances mm-hmm. that define how you're mm-hmm. gonna be. Where did you learn this principle and this mindset? You know, growing up, yeah. growing up, and and knowing a lot of people, and, uh, but that's and not really the Italian mindset, I would think. No, my so you my, had to- my dad and my mom. How, how, I call my mom every day. I say, Mom, how you doing? Yeah, it's, it's, it's too hot. The house is hot. I'm miserable. Economy is shit. There is no money. And with no, that job, said, no jobs. No jobs. I retired my mom and my dad five years ago. Yeah, yeah. So they're retired. They're, <laughs> yeah. They don't need to work. Yeah. But they still complain about Italy not having a job. Right. You know, and, and it's too hot. All right, that's great. It's too hot. Buy an air conditioning system. <laughs> yeah. Buy something. You know, yeah, fix yeah. it. Just do, What are you going to do to react to your environment? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was... Um, it's funny because it's that that's the biggest the biggest pet peeve I have is when people giving me all kinds of excuses of why things are not happening for them. You know, I, in life I'm like, I I treat my life like, think about a military tank, right. full metal jacket military tank. When you're a tank, things don't happen to you. You're happening to things. Uh-huh. So and the reality is that that's how you gotta live your life. Doesn't matter what happened. It's only the way you react to what's around you that will define who you're going to be in life. Mm -hmm. You can grow up. I came to this country with no English, million and a half in debt. Because although we might not go there, my father had a very big financial distress Mm -hmm. three months before I left for Italy. And I sold my business in Italy before I left. I wanted to move to the United States for vacation. And I found myself paying my dad liability to the bank and be about to come to United States and instead of having the time of my life, because I was a millionaire, yeah. 27 years old. <clears throat> in Italy, I, in Italy, hard to do. Yeah, I, I saved a lot of money in Italy by selling all my business before I was taking the lifetime vacation of my dream and coming here and learning a new language, be yeah. the man for two <clears throat> years, not doing shit, nothing. And then you were to go back is the goal originally? You know, my, my goal here was to go back and yeah, yeah. figure it out. I got money. I could invest some, yeah. create business for myself. I created a business from scratch and do that again, right? Yeah, yeah. And instead, what did I do? I came to United States. I had a ticket ready. I went from having seven digits in my banking account to be broke mm. because that went to pay my dad liability so they didn't lose the house. Mm. Now I'm in America, no English spoken, no money, a million mortgage because all the money I had they weren't enough to pay everything, and I still signed the paper for my dad. So, mm. you know, my dad is a 60 years old guy. He was like completely stressed and down, yeah. and let's say he's not gonna get <clears throat> out of it. I made him once, I can make it again. Mm-hmm. Plus, it's my family. You gotta take care of, of family. Course. So now I'm in United States, no English, b- not even broke because when you're broke, you got no money. <laughs> When in you're debt. in debt, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I didn't have a job, and I didn't speak the language, so now we got a th- over a thousand employee, mm. you know, multi-million dollar business. English, it's okay, still struggling with it. But you have it's a okay. thousand employees now, about twelve hundred. Wow! And all your restaurants and all the all the restaurants, all the company wow. wine uh, wine business sure. licensing. It's about twelve hundred people now, right, right. and you know we have a business in the in the in the A digit. Wow! And That's the reality, mid A digit, and the reality is that. The question I always ask, what's your excuse? Mm. 
Mm. I didn't speak a word of English. Yeah. Came here in debt, million dollar. Most people won't never have a million dollar in <laughs> yeah. debt in a lifetime. Yeah. You know, people freak out. They have like twenty thousand dollar student loan. Yeah. That's easy. I, can, I we can sh- <laughs> we can show you how to get rid of that <laughs> in, in two months. <laughs> yeah. In a in day. day. Yeah, <laughs> we did better than that. In a day, in two hours. Exactly. But the reality is that it's not circumstances. Mm-hmm. It's how you react to it. Yeah, I love this, man. I love this. So what was the dream then when you came here? Uh, it wasn't to be on a TV show. It wasn't oh. to – it was just to start a couple restaurants, building your fu- – No, even I found myself forced to it. You know, right. sometime, I, I heard an interview about, sometime, about the TV show, right? Sometimes the best uh, – your best chance to succeed is to do not have a plan B. Think about it, right? Mm-hmm. If you have people that go like, if this doesn't work, I have a plan B. Yeah. I guarantee then it's you, not gonna work. I guarantee you it's not gonna work. <laughs> exactly. I guarantee it's not gonna work. Yeah. My plan B didn't exist. <clears throat> I was my first idea to come to America was a vacation. Yeah. I was a wealthy kid in Italy because I built my own business there. I sold it, cash out, and I was gonna be a pimp in vacation <laughs> for two years. Where were you living originally when you moved here? Uh, I was living in Ventura County. Okay, yeah, right, by the beach near Santa Barbara. I got a, and the way I here. rented an apartment for a year wow. by the beach. I wanted to have a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Luis, I never took a vacation in my life. I was 27. Years, yeah. I got a wow. million dollars in my banking account. Screw it. I'm going to sure. go to America. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to l- see the world. Right. So but, what, what happened next, and when did the process come to doing a, uh, being on Top Chef? Because I heard you turned it down like two or three seasons in a four, row. Right? Four seasons. So, w- so what happened is that I was, uh, I was working with a friend of mine in a restaurant in Ventura, and one of the producers of Top Chef – which I didn't know who he was or what he was doing, came in with his wife to ask the hot restaurant where I was working at to cater their their uh, rehearsal dinner at their house for their wedding. Mm-hmm. The owner of that restaurant was a big shot. I was just one of the line cook because I was just there. You're a new guy. You a didn't new speak guy. English. Didn't speak English. I had to find a ten dollar an hour job for right. myself to to learn the language. Right. So and and I'm surprised I, you didn't learn Spanish. <laughs> full, fu- I, I, I'm fully fluent in Spanish. Right. Well, it's pretty similar. The, the first two years in the United States, I came here to learn English, and uh, I was Spanish. full of Spanish, not a word of English. I was like, <laughs> this is not going to work out, man. So I and this guy, pretty much, they came in uh, trying to hire the restaurant for a rehearsal dinner. Mm-hmm. The owner was a big shot. He asked for too much money. The bride to be was in tears. Oh. I was like, "That's fucked up, man." Like, seriously, <laughs> just help, this, help these guys out. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who cares if they want to pay you sixty dollars a person instead of seven? Doesn't matter. Right, right. Do something. So I went out back door to the rest, and I was like, "Guys, I'll, I'll take love, care. I know every recipe in this restaurant. I'll take care of it. Yeah. I'll do it for you." And the guy yeah. was like, "Would you?" I'm like, "Yeah." I don't even need to get paid. You seem like good people. She was crying. So I'm like, "You guys seem like good people. I'll take care of it." Were you speaking English this time? Or? Little. Enough to be able <laughs> to communicate. <laughs> I will help you. Like, right? Enough to communicate. It's something. okay. It's okay. <laughs> and so, and they were like, oh my God, you're so nice. And then at that night, you know, the, the night of the party, I met one of the, his business partner, uh-huh. which he was one of the executive producer of the show and the guys in charge of casting. And then he invited me and I turned it down because I mm. didn't want to be on TV. I just got a job in a restaurant. I'm trying to yeah. learn English. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't even see him. Plus, I you know this. I come from a culture where celebrity, TV, chef, there isn't. Mm-hmm. You know, in Italy, if you're on TV, you're either an actor or you're a felony and you made the news. <clears throat> so that's it. So right. I didn't have, oh, my God, let me be a chef on TV. I'll kill it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? what are you talking about? No, I don't do TV. I don't even speak English. Right. So and, and then they kept asking me. We, sta- we became friends. They wow. kept asking me for three years. And then season five, I gave in because so at that point I was married. I did open a new business. I understood that America watches a lot of TV. Yeah. And then you I said- You had a restaurant at that time? At that point, I had a restaurant. I, I, <clears throat> in Ventura or in- Chicago? In Moore Park. In Moore Park. Moore Park, yeah. yeah. My, my very first restaurant owned in the United States was in Moore Park, California, Cafe Firenze, yeah. which is still there, still yeah. going strong. And, I'm gonna uh, check it out soon. Next time we'll, we'll have dinner together. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, and then, and then I decided to do the show in season five after I got asked to do season one, two, three, and four. Wow. And I was turned it down because I just didn't believe that TV was that good for me. I, I, though I didn't watch TV, I don't yeah, still watch I don't really TV. Watch much either. I just learned that exposure is good no matter what, but you gotta look good. Where would your life be right now if you didn't go on Top Chef? It would have been busy. I would have a lot of business still because I'm, I'm a doer. Yeah. Uh, 
probably I would have met certain people that I met through the business. So some of the business I have would not be as uh, good, mm -hmm. you know, because the reality is that if I didn't on, if if I didn't go on TV, I probably wouldn't be here today. Yeah. You know, because your project manager know me very well, and she said, <laughs> yeah. "Yeah, Fabio, you is house. <laughs> it's gonna be a deal. They can house going down, done." <laughs> exactly. So, so see that TV is good for that. Yeah. But you know, I st I would still have few restaurants. I yeah. would still killing it because that's that's you know because you work hard and that's your because we your attitude. work hard and we work smart. But the challenge is, you know, we were talking before. I think you said, you know, the licensing business has been a huge business for you and yeah. bringing in a lot of income, and that <laughs> has come from your personality, from your TV stuff, fame, from your credibility, from TV. Yes. And that's a big deal. You know, that's good. It money. is a big deal. It's a great paycheck. And, and all the speaking and yes. With that said, though, mm -hmm. let's break it down. Yeah. Yes, licensing, licensing, licensing for who doesn't know what licensing is. Licensing is when you're famous or when you have an audience <laughs> yeah. and you allow people, product, and company to, to borrow your, your likeness, image, and, and, and name and put it on product that you endorse or you build with them or you co-pack, mm -hmm. whatever it is, right? Yeah. For example, I own my winery in California. I have a winery. That's not a licensing. That's a company I own, you own it. and I bring it out. Now I work with uh, you know, some other company where my name is on their product. We develop together. I don't own the company. But you get a percentage. But I get a percentage of sale. That's a license. <clears throat> but even that, Luis, think about this one. Top chef, right? People say, oh, you do licensing. Of course you do speaking engagement, and you make a lot of money per day because you're famous. All right, let, let me break it down for you. <laughs> I was one out of 270 people that in the whole season of the show went on and, and did the same exact things I did. Hmm. How many do you guys remember from the show? Two, three, four? So 270 from all the seasons? 270 people wow. so far went through the same That's show crazy. I did. And I didn't even win the show. <laughs> Think about American Idol. Right. So many people go through it. And how many you know about it? One, Couple. two, three? Yeah. Right. So television is good. Television is an, an op is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Television is the environment mm -hmm. that can expose you. Yes. But if you don't know what to do with it, if you don't have you a don't, game plan. I had a game plan, man. Yeah. You know, a lot of people that won the show, I didn't even win it. A lot of people that won the show, they disappear from face of earth. Mm. You know why? Really? Yeah. Well, they might have one restaurant and they're famous in like <clears throat> a small city. Right. You know why? Because they don't have a game plan for social media. Mm. They don't put themselves out there. They don't. I can get. You know, it's funny because part of my business, right, it's to do for big corporate mm. what you do for small business right, owner. Right. We coach them in how to get exposed and how to monetize that, yeah. right? So the reality is that a perfect unknown person, somebody, you give me any person with some sort of expertise that could mm. be taught, that yes. they can teach that tomorrow that nobody knows, you give it to me in 90 days, I'll place them as an authority yeah. on social media, yep. TV, yep. radio. It's easy. The path is there. If they do the work. If they do the work. <clears throat> can't I just make it for them. Can't just make it for them. Yeah. I've done the work. Yeah. I've done the We've work. We've been hustling for seven, <laughs> eight, nine, ten yeah. years. So yeah. my overnight success has been 26 years. <laughs> yeah. It's an overnight. It's still long overnight. It's still going. It's yeah. still going strong, and I haven't even started yet. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next. <laughs> stay tuned for the next ten years, man. Yeah, yes. Watch, exactly. we're taking over. The only reason why I can't be president is because I'm not American. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. So, what was the game plan going into it? So, you turned it down three years, and and then you said, okay, maybe there's something to this. I'm gonna do the next season. And what was the game plan? Were you like, okay, I'm going to get on TV and, and I'm going to be the certain way, or I'm just going to be myself? I'll and be. You got to be yourself, right? <clears throat> um, right. You know. I, I am very well aware with your story, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. football player, yeah. had an accident, got into a funk, yeah. but you're a good guy inside. You're, yeah. you're a good person. You found your passion, you bounce mm -hmm. back, now you're murdering it. Yeah. You know, think <laughs> about social media, top 10 people on the planet, your name comes yeah, up yeah. for some reason somewhere. Yes, so the you. reality is that you got to have clear goal and you got to be a good person. Yeah. Television only expose who you really are, mm. all right? Now, there are exceptions where... Your character on TV plays a role that you might not in life, mm -hmm. but that's hard to do. It's hard. To that's do, like man. a skill to it, even it's do like, that. It's like it's like lying, really. Yeah. Think about it. That's why I don't lie. I I am. Um, 
I'm black or white. I don't have a yeah. mesh, right? I'm yeah. black or white. Uh, you know, the reality is that television exposes who you are. Now, they can edit things that you set left and put it right, mm-hmm. but they cannot put word in your mouth. Yeah. They cannot edit. They can't take the energy away from you, the they essence can't. on TV. So responding to your question, my goal was to be good, look good, look like I, I do care for people, which I really do, yes. and I'm be like a genuine, likable kind of guy. Yeah. So once you have that, my business game plan was like going for blood. Like, hey, now we got TV exposure. <laughs> Let's multiply that yeah. through restaurant. We yeah. start to do event with the restaurant, mm. live events, social media. That's when I picked up your LinkedIn course right yeah, after Top Chef. It. That's but crazy. I when was, was the season? What year was this? Season five was uh, <clears throat> 2009. Uh, wow, man. Yeah. It's crazy. I didn't yeah. even know you were doing all this. Yeah. That's crazy. So yeah. you started really hustling before really hustling, yeah. and after show yeah. and maximizing it. Yeah. And you and then probably you shot the show and then it probably came out three, four months later. I'm assuming, no, I right? shot the show and it came out almost a year later because I, I, I finished to shoot it in February and it came out in November, December. So you're hustling that whole year. You're like, okay, it's coming out. Let's coming get everything out. ready so people can yeah. buy things. Well, most chefs don't do that. They're like, no, oh, they were we're like oh, of- I'm going to be on TV. <clears throat> Who's going to, you know. Who's going to come to my bachelor pod and having a good time? <laughs> oh, I was the guy on TV. Do I get a free dinner? Oh, hey, do you want me to sign your... <laughs> right, go to like trade shows and do yeah, signs. Yeah, and just yeah. Be, be, you know, yeah, yeah, fun yeah. things that they last until the next season is up and then your your heart is cold all of a sudden and yeah. your five minutes of fame <laughs> lasted three weeks. Right, exactly. Seriously. And you've really, you've leveraged it because you're a fan favorite <laughs> and then you came back on another show. Yeah, Top came back Chef. on and then, then ended up, you know, building this huge brand on, on, yeah. on, on TV and last year, Fabio Viviani brand had an aggregated 600 million impression. Wow. And last year alone, I did 112 TV appearances. 112? Yeah, last year alone. Wow. What's been the most fun TV uh, you know, I Parents. love a few show uh, that are very dear to my heart because I just love the people there. Yeah. Home and Family on Hallmark Channel. Okay. I love that. Yeah. Actually, we should do something together there. They're good Let's people. You're gonna you're gonna love that, man. Let's do it. The Chew on ABC, uh-huh. very good. I love the talk. Yeah. Because you know Sharon Osbourne, she's a good she's a good lady. I know her, and I know that you know all the other lady there. The producer are delightful people. Yeah. And um, and you know those are those are normal show that. The people like and people would know about it. Right. Um, I love to work with, you know, beside the guys of Bravo. Bravo is like, you know, the starter family. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. all those people are good to me. Um, I love Food Network. I just mm-hmm. finished to shoot a season of Cutthroat Kitchen. Fantastic. So f- the show is fun as hell because, <laughs> you know, they get chefs and they put out their comfort level by sabotaging them. How uh, it's a fun show. And, and, you know, I like to have fun. Yeah, of course. I'm not a mean You're guy. A fun guy. I'm not a mean guy. You know, not, I, who's the mean guy on that show? Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay, yeah. But again, you know, it's it's mean on the show, but it's a piece of cake in real life. He's so nice, you're like, right? why yeah. are you you're expecting this? Then he's expected to be like that yeah, all the time. Yeah, and then he's such a nice guy. It's and I'm tough. like, it's got to be tough, you know? It's really hard to do that. Put it on this. So, but yeah. he's a good guy and he's doing phenomenal. Yeah, crushing So, yeah. Wow. Um, <clears throat> do you ever want to do your own show? I do, I, I do. You know, I would love to have my own show, but there is gotta be there is gotta be rules, and the we right gotta thing, draw the yeah. line. You know, I don't want to be on TV just to be on TV. I'm very particular about what I do and who I associate mm-hmm. myself with. Yeah, yeah. Because I have one brand. Once you screw that up, you, you're done, it's man. It's tough to get it back. Yeah, you're done. That's tough. You know. Um. So I, what I do actually in December, I, you know, I have enough of stuff to produce my own shows yes so what i do online in December, or, or online or platform I, I know pretty much every every network in the nation yeah so i i can at least i can sit down in any meeting in any right right because we've been there for a while now yeah, so yeah. i know all the players and, and what i do i'm going to shoot two different shows. i'm going to shoot a 52 episode of a business show mm. where you know think about something like this but where i'm in, on camera talking about business, giving people advice on 52 different aspects of business. Mm. 52 because 2016 is 52 weeks, mm-hmm. so one episode per week for sure. a year time. Sure. And we're shooting that over a week period. Wow. And then right All after that- 52 in one week. That's smart. Batch it up. And then after that, I'm shooting 52 episodes of the best kitchen tips. Mm. So I will get back on camera and I will just shoot the 52 top- tricks that will improve 
the cooking experience of people at right, home right. by teaching them stuff like I'll teach you today. Yeah. Ninety second fresh pasta, my old boy away. Amazing. Ninety I love second. It. I so love somebody's it. on the video phone downstairs. Hey, uh -huh. we're coming up. Fresh pasta. Wow. By the time they run <laughs> up, you got pasta ready. That's amazing. That's crazy. Um, what's the experience you want people to have when they walk into your restaurants from the, the moment they <coughs> park to the moment they come in from after the time they eat their meal and when they leave? What do you want them to feel and experience? I just want to have have them to have a good time. Mm. You know, you know, most people say, oh, my food is awesome. That's great. But if the service suck, if the hostess at the front desk doesn't have a big smile, if you have shit in the parking lot all over, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So it's an experience. If you're hungry, you make a sandwich at home and you're, you're not happy. hungry anymore. <laughs> yeah. If you go out, it's because you want an experience. So I don't care if you're coming to my restaurant because you're a Top Chef fan, because you're a Fresh Pasta fan, or because we just got three stars from the Chicago Tribune as the best steakhouse mm -hmm. in town. You got to come to my restaurant and you got to live with a good time. Right. And good time is a combination of good service, good food, good atmosphere, upbeat, you know, everything. You know, right. that's why I run a very successful hospitality development business mm -hmm. with my business partner. Sure, sure. And how do you get it all done? I mean, how do you make the experience great? Have um, 12,000 employees, do 112 appearances on TV, have 10 plus restaurants, licensing online social media speaking how do you get it all done and by the way i saw your babies do october 27th that's when my book's coming out fantastic we got two babies coming out at the same time <laughs> one will make you money one will drain my checking account <laughs> damn it i got the wrong baby coming <laughs> all right well how do i make everything happen so here's here's a i'll tell you what um i'll tell you what's happening before i'll tell you how i make everything happen the biggest critic of my work mm -hmm. the biggest people that judge me on every day the famous haters are people that work 40 hours a week, they never have to relocate in a different country, mm -hmm. they speak one language and they make fun of me because I have an accent, they never had the guts to take on a liability and to put themselves out there. Mm -hmm. I work 130 hours a week, Lewis. I get up at five every morning, <laughs> yeah. I do some push-ups, I run for 10 minutes on a treadmill just mm -hmm. to get the blood flow. By 5.30 I have a green tea in my hand, I start to get email, phone, and by 9 o'clock, when most people wake up, 8.30, 9 o'clock, I have done probably two hours solid of work yeah. that other people cannot get done in eight hours of an office stuff. Because, yeah. you know, if morning for me, it's good because no, there is no distraction, yes. right? And then during the day, I travel. Um, last year, I did uh, 200,000 fly mile, <laughs> shy of 200,000 fly mile. Um, 112 TV appearances, wow. 70 speaking engagement. I opened three restaurants last year. I wrote a book. Um, mm. Had time to get married. <laughs> Did <a laughs> make, I made a baby. So <laughs> yeah, time to do that. I had time to do that. Um, <laughs> was in half an hour. It didn't talk much, but yeah. and then uh, and the reality is that like, like 90 seconds, like we're gonna make that pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Could happen, but but no, that time was a good one. Um, and the reality is that you just gotta work. Yeah. You know, you got to do the work. Why do you think so many people aren't willing to do the work? What's missing from them? What are they lacking that they don't want to you know, do? I, I don't, I, you know, I wish I could answer because if I could answer, I could build a business and fix it. Mm. Um, I think that most people like, I think the most, my, my only belief is that the excuses on why you're not getting yourself to do something are just, you know, stronger then the reason why you should do it in first place. Your vision. It's your vision, man. What? What? Tell me about. Talk to me about vision. Why is? You know, uh, what's? How do you find a vision? I grew. I grew up. I grew up in a. In a. I grew up with a group of friends that. All they were talking about was whether how we're gonna get fucked up this Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, they were talking about what are we gonna the, do to what we're yeah. gonna do to just go out and have fun Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. When you're me, Monday morning are as fun as Friday night. Yes. That's the reality. They're exciting. They're exciting. Yeah. Because I have a week of, you know, people that can get back to me because they're not off on the weekend. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to hear from this guy I called on Thursday night and it's the weekend. It's not going to answer. So for me, it's a vision. Mm. I, I work right now for a goal that I want to achieve in 2020. Yeah. You know? What is that goal? You know, I have a, I, I want to buy my next goal that I, I recently disclosed with my wife. You know, it's to buy a, a 20 acre property wow. in a very beautiful neighbor 
in uh, Chicago, mm. buy a lake. I want to have 20 acre because I know what to do with those 20 acre. I have everything mapped build out. A little farm, a little. I have everything in my head, yeah, man, yeah. and I yeah. have it on paper, and I keep it very safe. And in order to do that, I need 10 million dollar in cash. <laughs> yeah. And in order to do 10 million dollar in cash in the f- next five year, I break it down. Yeah. The problem is that people don't know how to goal setting. People don't know how to goal setting. You know, goal setting is not. I want to be national team of mm-hmm. whatever you play. Right, I don't. Right. The goal is not ten million. Mm-hmm. Ten million is the vision. The goal is let's break down ten million in cash. How do I get there? Every day. Every at day. One step at a time. Every day. You know, ten million broke it down for you know a year is about thirty thousand dollar a day. Yeah. How do I make thirty thousand dollar a day? Or you know, it's like. Is like you know nine hundred thousand dollar a month, or, but, you okay, know. Yeah. So th- the goal setting, people miss goal setting skills and people miss vision, mm-hmm. you know. And that's and that's I think is the biggest problem. But a lot of people they're content, mm. you know. I was poor. Yeah. Now I'm 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 not I wouldn't say I'm rich, but I'm doing well for myself. Yeah. Dude, I picked that all day. <laughs> yeah. All day, you know, and I was a happy guy when I was broke. Because my right. inner happiness is not dictated by money. Mm. But even then, I had a vision. You know, I was like, my vision makes me excited, man. Mm. I know it's far away. It's really far away. But it's getting, it's just far away from a time stamp line and small goal settings. Because yeah. a big plan is nothing else than the combination of small achievement. Yeah. Little tiny one. How do you stay consistent throughout, you know, when you have roadblocks, when you have adversity, when you're people can understand you because of the language barrier when you're facing all these challenges how do you stay consistent and what would you say to someone else who's you know, challenged with that it hasn't been easy all the time you yeah. know i had my days i had what i was like well what am i doing that man it's fucking so hard why yeah. why the reality is that again it's it's a matter of how you how you want to live the rest of your life you know you want to be the guy that leaves a legacy or you want to be the guy that you know witness other people do so mm. for me stay motivated it's just a matter of be true and 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 stop being full of shit towards mm. the things you want to achieve you yeah, know yeah. i have a lot of people i know that are overweight i have a lot of people i know that they they could do so much more with their life but yeah they just don't want to you know why because they're comfortable mm-hmm. they're comfortable in their position and they make themselves believe that that's all they will ever get you know yeah. it's i think it, it's i i for me staying motivated <laughs> i don't want my kids go through what i went through right. you know i got a kid on the way i just I, i'm not kidding you i'm not if i don't spend like money like I'm not a bowler. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I save money. Yeah, you invest it. I invest money. I, I, I make my money work for me, right? Yes. Now, I take my wife to vacation. I bear no expenses. Right. But I never take a vacation. Yeah. So for me, it's like, all right, we go to the best hotel because I want to experience yeah. that. But the reality is that I know my kids is coming. Half of the expenses I had, they're gone overnight, not thinking. <laughs> I don't need a $1,000 pair of sneakers now. No. I don't care because no. now it's not about me. It's about my family. Yeah. So great 100 bucks sneakers boom yeah, done you know <laughs> so for me i'm not a materialistic kind of guy mm-hmm. you know i have uh, and the thrive is just to be able to be the guy that people are talking about it for the next 10 20 30 mm-hmm. 50 year after i'm dead mm-hmm. <clears throat> do you have a fear of people not talking about you i could give a shit about it meaning i do i'm not motivated by other people's opinion because mm-hmm. those opinions don't pay me or my family's bill when I say I want people to talk about it, I refer to the people I love and I care. Mm. The general public, they will always have an opinion. Yes. I do hope that that opinion is good, yeah. but as long as I'm in good standing with the people I love, my family and the people I care for it, yeah. it's, it's all, all it matters. matters. Yeah, it's yeah. all that matters to me. What would you say <clears throat> is your superpower? If you had a superpower. I'm relentless. Mm. I, I don't quit. I'm unbeatable, man. There you go. I cannot be beat because it's very hard to beat somebody that never quit <laughs> that's true i don't quit I, if i set my mind on something it's going to happen and i fail i have been bent over i have been beat and and tied but i never been broken you can win because i don't quit so if when i want something you can bet anything you have that it's going to happen there is no excuses 
There is no second guesses. And being an entrepreneur and being a, a, a person as motivated as I am, there is always a way. Now, life gets in the way and the plan can change, but never the goal. Yeah. The plan changes all the time. Hey, if I tell you in five years I need to get $10 million in cash because I need to buy that dream for myself, you bet your ass on it that I'll have it. Mm. Now, I have a plan right now for the next five years the on how to get there. The plan's going to change. plan I know is going to it's change. It's going to change a million times probably. The next it doesn't years. matter, but the goal never changed. Yeah. The plan and the execution could change a thousand times. Yeah. You can get screwed over and start all over again. That's okay. But you, gotta, you can't take guys out of the prize, man. What do you think is holding you back from getting to where you want to be? What's in the way right now? What's, nothing is what's hold, your biggest challenge? Nothing is holding me back. It's just a matter of uh, creating time, right? Timing, yeah. um, one, one of the things I'm, I'm really good at, it. I think I'm probably one of the best out there, it's time management. Mm. I can save people half of their time in doing the same things all day long. How so? There is distraction. Yeah. 21st century is full of distraction. From airplane go by to your house to your phone ringing, notifications, social media, stalking your ex girlfriend, the male guy text. People text you, hey, I'm about, I'll call you in five minutes. Fucking just call <laughs> me in five minutes. Why are you texting me? You're calling me in five minutes. You know, when I do meetings in my company, there is no chairs. Mm. Because why you want to sit down and get comfortable? Let's get shit over, let's talk about mm. it, and then we move out. I like that. So the reality is that I can save time to everybody. I cannot create time. Yes. You know, so we always have the 24 hour and I'm one of the best people you'll ever meet about time management. Mm. So my time is very well managed. And 90% of my time, if we take away shower, bathroom breaks, stuff that, that require my full attention, eating. like driving <laughs> or eating, every other minute I have, it's employed by something that creates a benefit for my legacy. Mm. There is no distraction in my life. Mm. I get shit done, I get shit done quickly, and I get shit done on time. Mm. The reality is that there is just 24 hours. Yeah. So my t time is my biggest asset and my biggest deficit. To create bigger goal, you have to start to eliminate smaller goals that don't achieve the bigger result in the timely manner. Mm. The problem is that I care for people. And sometimes when you eliminate smaller goal, some people that live off of those smaller goal will get affected by. Yeah. So before I do that, I need to make sure that those people are taken care or those people are part of the bigger goal. Because although it's not my business to take care of yourself or anybody else around me beside my family, I still care for people and I'm fair to them. You so some heart and you want them to succeed and right. support so you. So sometime, sometime, you know, for me, before I change path and, and I always think about how that will affect people involved in that scenario, you know, we had experience where we had to close restaurant mm -hmm. or we had to do stuff and you think 40, about 40, 50 employees are gone. Right. So yeah. you want to make sure that those people are taken care of. And because at the end of the day, I care for people. I care. I'm very altruistic. I care for other more yes. than I care for myself. Yeah, yeah. So I that, feel the same way, yeah. that, although it's not very entrepreneur like, but I think it's good because just one thing you always guys want to remember is that life pays back good with good and bad with bad. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm a firm believer of karma and doing good to others. So if you if you try your best to always be good to others, mm -hmm. it might slow my goal down by a year or two, but I take care of people and it makes yeah, me feel good. Yeah, exactly. And it should, it'll come back exponentially Somehow, in the past. right? Yeah, Somehow it'll come yeah. back, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you have uh, your own PR team or do you do all this yourself? I, oh, I have an army. Uh, <laughs> it's a reality. You know, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's, let's go back to time management. You know, why I do, why would I want to do task that if I, you know, it's, it's all mathematic, right, Luis? Mm -hmm. If last year you made seven digits and you divide those seven digits by 365 days, 12 months, 30 days a month, 24 hours a day, your time is valued. 80 bucks an hour, 100 bucks an hour, 300 bucks an hour, right? So if I get, if I perform a task myself that I can pay somebody 20 bucks an hour mm. and my time last year was $200 an hour, yeah. you're wasting time, you're exactly. wasting money. Exactly. So that's why I keep hiring people and just keep growing and growing and growing. So people yeah. don't understand that. Oh, I'll do it myself. I don't want to pay anybody. Oh, that's, that's great. You're just losing money by doing it yourself. Sure, sure. So I have, I have a good PR team. The 100% of the content I do 
my blogs, my business review, my recipe. It's done by me. Yeah. And, the you know. The team executes it as well. And my team, yeah. you know, executed. They broadcast it. You know, today we post the recipe. I did the recipe. They post it. Yeah. Because if, if I have to log in physically every time I go on social media, I wouldn't have time to do anything else. Yeah, exactly. So I have a PR team. I have a marketing team. Do you check on social media ever? And, ha- every day. Yeah. Oh, every day. But you're you not know? just executing everything. I'm the guy that goes to the bathroom and is on Twitter. I'm doing that too. Yeah, doing that's it. what I get to use my social media. <laughs> For long bathroom breaks. I was I was doing this uh, speech at a at a conference for uh, for a big software company eight years ago um, in uh, in Vegas and and I made everybody laugh by saying you know thanks to Twitter my poop time got so much more entertaining because <laughs> <laughs> because otherwise you're just there like that there's exactly. nothing to do. There's nothing to do. So now just you know, waiting. <laughs> yeah. So I'm the I'm that guy. You That's know I'm funny. the guy that the red light answers somebody on Twitter yeah, exactly. and on the bathroom answer yeah. and before I go to bed I passed out answering. You know <laughs> it is what it is, man. I love it. I love it. A um, couple questions left for you. I, yeah. I feel like we could do this all day and hopefully we can do more of these in the future. Um, what's the thing? What's the question? You've done all these interviews over the last five years. What's the question no one's ever asked you that you've wanted to answer? Wow. The question no one has ever asked me that I wanted to answer. Wow. That's a great question, man. Mm. Wow. The question that no one has ever asked me. Or that you wish they would. Either you wish you could answer it or you want them to ask it. You know, here's the reality, right? This is what I believe. I do believe that people don't, when you have the time, like, you know, today we have an hour together. And when I have the chance to be with somebody like you Mm. that is creating success, right? And is creating a legacy and is making the difference in people's life and is creating a a name for yourself. Mm. People ask a lot of stupid questions. Yeah. How do I be rich? Mm. How do I make a million dollar? How do I do what you do? Well, you fucking can't, you can't do it because I'm me. <laughs> You're not me, right? So <laughs> I don't have one question um, that I wish somebody I wish they asked me. I just wish that the average IQ or question that people ask me would have been more intelligent. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I had the chance to be sometime with the most brilliant people on the planet and I ask them question that truly can benefit myself yeah. without getting nosy. I don't care how much money you make. You, it's you. Yes. I could give a shit. What I care is that, you know, asking question like, hey, you know, I'm trying to do this what it's your opinion about the best way mm-hmm. to go about it, you yeah, know? Yeah. And the reality is that I, I like people that ask intelligent questions. I just find that the majority of people out there, they have like a rhetorical question book and they <laughs> ask, I, I want to be, you know, I, I got this kid, this kid asked me, t- t- was like on, I got a DM on Instagram saying, Hey, how do I do, how do I get, uh, I just opened an account because we're opening the Know How Leadership Academy yes, in January. Office. So yeah. we're building content right now. We're building momentum. We're building some social media following. Mm-hmm. We got 10,000 followers in four months with some tricks that we teach and learn, whatever. Kids come to me and they say, hey, I said, I'll give you $1,000 if you grow my account to 10,000 people. Can I do that? Or can, And I'm like, dude, that's <laughs> It's not the way it works. It's not the way it works. It's not yeah. the way it works, man. You got to put the work in. Yeah. You know, a good question could really be, but then they don't listen, you know. you The good question to ask would be, what's the path? Yeah. Now, the answer, it's a very complex. It's, it's taking action and it doing the work. It takes in action and doing <laughs> relentless, you know, yeah. action every day. But I think that although I cannot pinpoint a single question, that I wish people would ask me. I just wish that the level of intelligence mm-hmm. of the question asked yeah. would be really meaningful mm-hmm. because there is a lot of people ask stupid questions. Yeah, I saw one of your videos online talking about um, how you ask the right questions and most people ask the wrong questions. Yeah, you got to ask the right question, right? Yeah, and that the level of your questioning will get you a, a better result right. based on your question. Yeah, I mean, I mean, seriously. Yeah. If I talk to you, you're an online expert. You know how to build webinar. You know how to build 
online courses, you teach people effective way to package stuff that they know and sell it for people that could use the information. Yeah. If I guess that you probably have had day where you made a hundred thousand dollar in a day mm -hmm. selling online courses, and that's more than what average America makes in a year, the question I ask you, I come to you and I'm like, Luis, <laughs> this is what I'm thinking. Can I have one sentence of what you think what, I'm doing yeah, wrong yeah. or right? Or what would you do? Or, or what yeah, would yeah. you do with it? Yes. I'm not asking, say, hey, you know, how do I make a million dollar with my yeah, ebook? Yeah. That's yeah. a stupid fucking question <laughs> yeah. because the answer will take three years of planning and you, exactly. you know, that's, <laughs> exactly. yeah. that's, that's, that's the things. I wish the IQ of the question was mm -hmm. higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I feel like we're very similar because I was really bad in school. You were really bad in school. Do you feel like it's more important to have the heart over the intelligence yeah. in business and life? Or yes. it's better to have the intelligence over the heart? No. Heart and hustle beats intelligence all day long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Heart and hustle beats intelligence all day long. I can teach a donkey how to operate a business. I can make him get out of bed in the morning and I cannot make him have thrive, you know? Mm -hmm. That's a reality. Hustle and, and, and po willpower beats textbook intelligence yeah. all day. I agree. That's yeah. great. A uh, couple questions left. What's the thing you're most proud of that most people don't know about you, that you've done or? I, I retired my mom and my dad five years ago, which made me very happy. Mm. Um, I probably help financially more people for no return. I have nothing to do with these people, like beside, you know, trying to be good to other. I probably yeah. help financially more people that most people are aware of. Um, and I'm not doing it because I want to feel good, or I'm just doing it because it's a good thing to do, right? Yeah. Um, and 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 I like to help other, you know. I'm the kind of kids that by the age of 27 made a million dollar and lost a million dollar. Mm -hmm. So a million dollars, a million dollar. You can make it all day. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Money is just a number. Money, it's, it's currency. Money, it's not the goal. You know, um, you know, retiring my mom and my dad, it makes, made me very proud of myself because, you know, I, I, I got rich by selling business I've built on my own. My dad is an, is a, my dad is a handyman and my mom is a hairdresser. Mm -hmm. I don't come from money, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, ma I made a fortune by the age of 27 by working my ass off, lost everything to help my family, built it again and retired my family with no debt. Mm -hmm. So I made it twice. And, and you know, and, and now another things I'm very proud is that my kids, you know, that I don't have yet, my boy, which is about to born mm -hmm. in two months, he has already college paid for the next 10 years amazing and he's already you know and that's something that makes me proud i can die tomorrow if i'm happy and know he's and and i know that my wife and my kids are taken care of that's great so those are things i'm proud of and and, and I, i'm not proud about things i do myself because i don't care i don't drive a fancy car yeah, i don't yeah. i just you know money for me has different values and look, look don't get me wrong the day you know i'll probably buy an expensive car one day but i don't care <laughs> but the reality <laughs> it's is not that important right now it's not i doesn't i don't care it's not yeah. important right now yeah. Okay. It's really not. What are you most grateful for recently? I'm most grateful for the opportunity that I have every day. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my friend. I'm grateful that I found through my career good people mm. willing to help a helpless kid that didn't speak a word of mm. English and they had no reason to do so. But because they're good people, they decided to just give me guidance. Yeah. And I was smart enough to listen and I'm grateful for it. Yeah. I'm grateful for my thrive. I'm grateful for my faith in my ability and, you know, and, and I'm grateful every day just to get up in the morning and make the difference, man, because yeah. we're making the difference. That's awesome. We really are. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the end of the day for you. Uh, it's your last day and you've got a piece of paper and a pen to write down yeah. three truths that you've learned about life, that you've learned about business, yeah. relationships, anything you want to write down, yeah. but you can write down three things. Three things. You have no more books left. Nothing. Nothing left. This is what the people last three get to, things, last piece of things people everything get to see that's of you. left for me. Three truths. What would you write down? Do it right or eventually you'll do it twice. Mm. First truth. If you don't do shit right, or will back, bite you back in the ass and you got to do that again. Mm. So it doesn't matter who you are or what you do for a living. Do it right 
or do it twice first second second would be you cannot take care of anybody else unless you take care of yourself first mm -hmm. if you're unhealthy if you're broke you're not helping anybody yeah. take care of yourself first then you take care of everybody else the third biggest truth is that life it's never about how good you had it it's not about the color of your skin it's not about religion it's not about sex it's not about where you're coming from it's not about your past life it's not about how good you have it how good you had it it's only about how bad you want it three things mm, i love that i love that uh final question before we ask it make sure to check out this book check out your website uh, FabioViviani.com. Fabio also, what is the main things that you want to have people follow you on Twitter, Instagram, Periscope? You know, where else should they be? You you find out? you f you have a lot of stuff out there about me from a chef standpoint. So, mm -hmm. if you go to FabioViviani.com, you can find you know my restaurants and my books and everything else. One thing I would love to is that. What we're going to do very soon, we're going to share our knowledge with everybody out there and help, you know, because our, our past is like, helping people with a lot of money, corporate America yeah. figuring their shit out. Yeah. Now we're going to go into smaller business and, and, and people and self-improving people, right? And what's that called, that website? KnowHowLeadershipAcademy.com. Okay, cool. But the best things you can do, the website is not up yet because we're launching it in January. What you can do for now, just go on Instagram. Follow my account, Know How Leadership Academy on Instagram. Cool. We'll send all the update there, and then awesome. you guys are in for a good ride. There's going to be a ton of free stuff That's great. that is really good, and, yeah. and it will really change the way you you <clears throat> manage your time, you live your life, you think about business, you think about growth, goal planning, vision, everything we spoke about in the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a path broken down for everybody that up to grab. That's it. I love it. So make yeah. sure to go follow all those accounts, the Instagram account, and uh, the website will be up soon where they can opt in and, and yeah. learn more about that. Uh, before I ask the final question, I want to acknowledge you, Fabio. I acknowledge all my guests at the end. So I get to acknowledge you for your authenticity. Man, Thank you, you have so much... Uh, just passion and yeah. realness about you that is so enjoyable to be around. The moment we connected in here, yeah. it was like I felt like you're a brother. Uh, yeah. Your passion, your consistency over time, yeah. the ability to turn any struggle into an opportunity for you and to seize it and to, and to serve others, not only physically by serving us great food, but great information, your Thank love. You. And uh, I, I just appreciate so much about you i'm excited to to connect more and all that good stuff so Thanks, i acknowledge man. you for that Thank final you. question is yeah. what's your definition of greatness my definition of greatness is i think you know it's a big question uh my definition of greatness in every aspect of life it's to get up in the morning mm. doesn't matter what time you get up and doesn't matter what time you go to bed just be the fucking best you can in between that's the definition of greatness doesn't matter who you are doesn't matter if you're famous or not, if you have money or not. Get up in the morning, kick us, go to bed, repeat. You have one life, you're not going to live forever. S sorry, you know, too, <laughs> too fucking bad. You're not going to live forever. So just get up mm. and go to bed, but make sure that whatever you do in between, it makes the difference. That's the definition of greatness. Fabio, thanks for coming on, bro. Thanks, man. Appreciate Looking it. Looking forward for more. <laughs> this is awesome. You're awesome, man. And check out uh, the video we're doing right now uh, for making homemade pasta. We're going to do it Internet right. sensation. You is house. We make fresh pasta in 90 seconds. <laughs>